Hey everybody. Um, I felt like Booleans weren't really complete and maybe that's because we don't have quite as much class as we normally have. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I filled in some gaps and maybe give you a little bit of extra that you wouldn't otherwise have gotten. So you know that my background is in engineering um, when I was in college and one of my favorite classes was computer engineering, although I ended up being a transportation engineer. In computer engineering they have um, actual like physical systems like devices that um, will let you build an AND gate, like it's a thing, right? So we're gonna do this, um, make a table of inputs. If you had power coming in, it would be a one, so that would be sort of like having a true come in. And if you had no power on something, then it would be a, a zero, which would be false. So because I'm not asking you in this computer science class to actually like think about real power, no power situations, I'm not gonna do this with ones and zeros, but I am gonna do it with trues and falses because I think that'll help you guys. So let's start with what happens if you put in, a, let's see, a false and a false, right? No power goes in. Does any power come out? There's no way, right? Like it's still gonna be false, zero power. Okay, so if you put power into one, but not into the other one, right? And this is an AND gate. It wants this one and this one to both have power before it gives you anything. So you're still not gonna get anything useful out. And then the other option, the very last one, is that if you have power in both places and it's AND, you're definitely gonna get some power out. All right, let's do the same thing for OR. So an OR gate looks a little bit different because it has this curved line here. We're gonna have the same inputs because this is every set of possible inputs that you could have, right? If this is false, this could be false or true. If this is true, this could be false or true, right? Okay, so if these are both false and this is an OR gate, no power, no power, absolutely no power will come out of that. If this has no power and this one does, this is saying if either of these has power, we're good to go. So true, true. And if both of these are powered, you are still gonna get power out the other side because if one or the other or both of them is true, that's what you should get. So you'll end up seeing like, well, I'll show you just for fun. All right, so in computer engineering, you'd end up with these cool diagrams and you'd have to figure out what would come out of the circuit. So let's just go through and label these ands and ors. And, and, right, those are the ones with the straight lines, or, or. You absolutely do not have to know this for my class, but it's fun and so we're doing it anyway. So you have no power comes in, power comes in. So this and, is gonna put something out. This OR is gonna put something out. And this is just a wire that always has power. So what I want you to do is pause the video and take a second and figure out what you think will come out of this. All right, everybody pause it. Here's what I think is gonna come out. No power and power, and it's an AND gate. So an AND, they both have to be true. So I think this is gonna have a zero come out. And so the zero comes in here. No power is coming in, right? And then we have zero or one, that's going to give us a true, right? That's going to come out as a true. You're going to get power out of that. Now this one and this one, uh-oh, they weren't both one, and it's an and gate. It has to be this and this power, it's true and true. So this is going to put out a false. But this or always gets a one, so it's going to print out a one at the end. So we will have power in the system at the very end. Now there's something kind of cool about the system. You may have noticed a shortcut. So in this case, because this one is always one and this is always or, what would happen if I changed this and made it a one? Oh, it's gonna give power, right? And if this is a zero, you're still getting power through this. So it turns out that this whole part of the system is absolutely ir irrelevant. And there are times in code where the computer looks at it and 
the compiler looks at it and goes, oh, I already know. And in Java, it's called a short circuit. So we're going to look at that right now. All right, here we go. We're gonna start with some totally, absolutely horrible problem. In fact, I'm gonna make it worse. I'm just gonna put a knot right in front of the whole disaster. All right? So let's, let's look at this and we'll try to work step by step through it. So I'll start with the parentheses. And here I'm gonna say, like, let me keep my knot so I don't forget about it. Okay, true and false. So remember in our table for and, if you had a true and a false, it comes out to be false, right? So this is false, bring down the or. True and not false, oh my goodness, this is true and not false is true, right? True and true, what does that give you? Mm -hmm. All right, so now we have this or and we have true. Okay, so now I have to figure out what this is. So I'm gonna leave this not false or true. So either one or the other. Well, this one is true, all right. So the whole thing is true now. Okay, not true, oh, not true is false. And now I'm bringing this down. True or false, oh, that's just true. Okay, now here's the thing. When the computer sees you type this big, long, terrible thing, it focuses on one particular part of it, which is kind of cool. True or. Regardless of what comes out of all of this mess, Regardless of all of that, whether this thing is true or false, true or false is true, true or true is true. So as soon as the computer sees this, it doesn't even bother to execute all of this. It just says, oh, I know it's true. And that, that's called short circuiting. So you can have that happen in your code. Um, which is sometimes useful because sometimes this part has the potential to break your code, but that's a completely different talk. So anyway, sometimes this happens. Now, would this happen if the thing in the front were false? So that's, that's kind of the next thing to think about. So maybe you can convince yourself of what the answer to that is. All right, so this has gotten a little bit complicated. I'm gonna reel it back in. We're gonna do a couple simple problems and maybe that'll help you answer that question before also. So if I have false or not true, the first thing I'm gonna do is deal with this. So if it's not true, it's false. So I've got false here. I have an or, false or false, that's gonna come out to be false, right? All right, in Java, I guess it would be false. Okay, in this one, I have false or true and true. If it's true and true, right, they both get power, so yes, all right, that's true. False or true, well, one of them at least is true, so you get a true out of there. So if the computer just sees true or something, right, then it doesn't really care, it already knows what the answer is. But if it sees false or false or false, you get false. False or true, you get true. It can't draw any conclusions from just this piece. It actually has to evaluate this to find out what the answer is going to be. Because in one situation it's false and in the other situation it's true. So there is one more situation with ands and ors where the computer can short circuit and say, ah, I already know the answer before you do anything. I'm not going to tell you what that is. Why don't you take a little bit of time on your own um, and figure out what it is. What is the other situation where the computer will know ahead of time, before it knows what the second input is, whether it's going to be true or false?